What's up? Welcome back to Bird's Basics. My name is Peter Bird. I teach at Box Elder High School. So today we're doing everyone's favorite conversation. We are going from large intestine down to anus, okay? Because everyone likes to talk about pooping and stuff like that. So I love when I'm teaching this in class because there's always those kids who are like, oh no, I don't poop. Uh, everyone poops. So what we're going to do is we're going to start with some basic large intestine anatomy and go from there. So here's our goal. Oh, let me get rid of my face. So here's our goal. So over here, we have identify the following. So we need to know the cecum, the colon, the parts of the colon, uh, the descending, uh, all we'll talk about that, the rectum and the anal canal. That's our parts and pieces. So let's go ahead and get started on the basics of this guy. So let's review. The first part of my small intestine, which is kind of hard to see coming out of your stomach, is your duodenum, right? And then I get to my jejunum, and then I get to my ileum. And remember, this is ileum with an E, because ileum with an I is the bones of your hips. So if we're going to zoom in on the ileum, this is my ileum right here. This right here is the first part of the large intestine, and it is called the cecum. So if it's okay with you, I want to zoom, zoom, zoom right there. Boop. So that's what I just did. So here is my ileum. This is my cecum. Oh, that's too dark. You can't even see that. Oh, that's better. This is my cecum. I like to teach cecum as an apple. And the reason why I teach this as an apple, because coming off the cecum, I have the worm coming off the cecum, which is my vermiform appendix. That is the appendix. So if I go back, can you see it there, hidden in there? So you guys got to recognize the appendix. The appendix is the first part of the large intestine. Well, the cecum is. Okay. So this is my cecum, which is my apple. And coming off him is the worm. Okay. And then this is my large intestine. All of this is my large intestine, which I'm generally going to refer to as colon. So I like to teach cecum as kind of the juncture point or the binding point between small intestine and large intestine. Now, there is a valve here between the ileum and the cecum. Okay, they're kind of trying to penetrate through here, it looks like. Okay, there's a valve here. I think you guys are going to like this is a procedure where they're trying to clear this valve. Okay, so this valve is between the ileum. Let's write them out again. Ileum and the cecum. Ileum, cecum. Ileum, cecum. Ileum, cecum. This valve is called the ileo cecal valve. How do you guys like that for a name? That's my ileocecal valve. Now remember, it is chyme right here. And as soon as it goes through here to the cecum, we change its name to its final name, which will be feces. Now this is still in a liquid state. It's 100% liquid. But in theory, we have absorbed all the nutrients we are going to need from my small intestine. So there is still some good stuff in here. There's salts and other things in here, but we call it feces from this point on. So what happens if your appendix ruptures? Well, that's quite terrifying because now you can defecate, which is a fancy name for pooping, inside your abdominal cavity. And that's why a ruptured appendix can be lethal. So if they think your appendix is going to burst, they'll take that sucker out. Okay, so there's my cecum, right? There's your appendix. This is my ileocecal valve right there. And now check out the names of your colon. Finally, in anatomy, you get one of the easiest parts in the world. The feces is going to travel upward. We call that the ascending colon. And then it travels across. Once we travel across, we call that the transverse colon. Then we drop down, down, down the roller coaster. That's your descending colon. And this is the one I'm going to test you on the most because this is the one most people don't know of. This is your sigmoid colon. And the reason why it's called the sigmoid colon, if I can, let me go ahead and see if I can bring this over. There we go. Check this out. Sigmoid. There we go. Let's just do sigmoid in general. You know why it's called sigmoid because look, it's named after the sigma, which is an S-shaped curve. So now if I get rid of my guy here, oops, and go back to what you guys need to know, this is why they call him a sigmoid. They call him a sigmoid because he is a S-shaped curve, bending it down to the rectum. That's my sigmoid colon. So please know all of your colons. So now the question is, what is the colon doing? Okay, There's a couple things he's doing, but almost every test question in medical anatomy and physiology is going to be this. His main job is to absorb water. 
Now, don't get me wrong. The small intestines can absorb water, too. In fact, they absorb most of it. But the large intestine's main job is to absorb water and salt. Okay, that's what it does. I mean, it does lots of other cool things, but in order to do that, it has to have these really cool folds. You see all these cool ridges right here that increase its surface area? That's not called segmentation. Remember, segmentation is something that is highly specific to the small intestine. So in large intestine, these folds we call hostra. Okay, let me write it bigger so you guys can actually see it. Hostra. So the hostra give it more surface area so it can actually have more absorption. Remember, it is a liquid here. Oh, that's a good picture of the ileocecal valve. It's a picture, uh, liquid here at this uh, cecum. Then it goes ascending, transverse, descending. Oh, sorry, let me move my face over here. We go. Sigmoid over here. Okay, and by this time, we're going to call it a semi-solid. The reason why it's a semi-solid is because we absorbed almost all the water from these hostra. The hostra just give it more surface area. Guess what happens if I absorb too much water? Well, we call that constipation. Guess what happens if the colon doesn't absorb enough water? Well, then you call that diarrhea. Now that I've absorbed all the water that I need and I've got all the salts I need, I've compacted the feces, I'm ready to, to expel it. There is a storage tank down here. That storage tank is called the rectum, okay? Before we get to rectum, though, let's stick on colon for a little bit more. There's a lot of things we're going to talk about colon. There's a video about colon cancer. I'll show you uh, in the next video. But one of the things we need to talk about is we need to talk about Crohn's disease. Now, everyone always gets this in my class mixed up with celiacs. They're both intestinal tract issues. Celiac is gluten-based. Okay, so celiacs is if someone eats gluten, it causes an inflammation generally in the small intestine. So keep celiacs and glutens out of this. Crohn's is a different story. Okay, right now, Crohn's is classified as an autoimmune problem, meaning that your immune system destroys or inflames your own intestines. It can be small. It can be large. It can be a lot of different things. The problem is that's hard to treat. Okay, we have medications that help. We do steroids that help. You can kind of see this stuff over here. I put this on here because it falls under IBS, okay? Irritable bowel syndrome, which I think they actually call irritable bowel disease now, okay? But it's one of those where it causes bloating, gas, pain, uh, fatigue, and cause anemia. There's so many things that it can cause, and it's just difficult to live with. It can scar the lining. If it gets really, really bad, I've heard of sometimes people getting parts of the colon actually removed. This is Crohn's disease. It is a very difficult thing to treat because we're still trying to struggle while and figuring out why it occurs. So that's Crohn's. Are you guys okay with calling it ileitis? Why would they call it ileitis as a common name? Well, that's not a common name. That's a scientific name, I guess. Well, it's just an inflammation of your ileum. See your ileum right here? Just add an itis on there, ileitis. You want an itis, chichinitis. Okay, you can add itis onto any colitis. Okay, it's just an inflammation, and it's extremely painful. I have a couple friends who have Crohn's disease, and sometimes it flares up, and sometimes they're great. Just depends on the day of the week. Okay, now let's talk about the rectum. The rectum, we're not going to take many notes about. The rectum is a muscular wall that will store the feces. So let's go ahead and put my feces in here. Okay, once the feces gets quite large, it will put stress on the wall of the rectum. The rectum will tell the brain and say, hey, man, we are getting full. And the brain will say, oh, man, I will take care of this. So now let's talk about the anal canal. Okay. I'm only going to give you two questions on the anus. Sorry, that does not look... Right, let's try this again. Anus, okay? I'm only going to give you two questions on the anus. And I think you guys all know this, except ain't nobody want to talk about this. But since I'm your teacher, I get the privilege of talking about it. So I'll get my gay face back on here. Okay. There are two valves you got to know. Guaranteed, guaranteed on the test. So let's go ahead and do this guy first. There is one valve right there. Okay? See this valve right here? He is called the internal anal sphincter. You okay with that? Now he's on the internal anal valve. He's the internal one. Then we have this muscle out here. Let's see it in red. Okay. We have this muscle out here. This one and this one, right? And we call this one the external anal valve. Now, you all know this. It's just saying nobody want to talk about this. So let's go through our scenario. You're sitting with your friends, you're eating lunch, you're eating all grist meal, and you're like, man, I'm having a good time. All of a sudden, the rectum gets this bulging, right? It pushes on the rectal wall because the feces tells the brain, brain doesn't. 
you need to know that the internal, blast from the past, see this sounds familiar to you, okay? The internal is non-striated. Please tell me that means something to you. Non-striated means involuntary, right? And smooth muscle. So guess what happens? The brain will open the internal anal valve. And once it opens the internal anal valve, then guess what happens to the species? It goes down. Because now that valve is not holding it in place. And this goes down. Thank heavens. Thank heaven above that we have an external anal valve. And guess what? This is striated. What does striated mean? That means this is skeletal muscle. And if you guys remember skeletal, that means it's voluntary. So then you can clench down on this to make sure the feces doesn't come out. So I know this is not appropriate. Well, I don't know if it's not appropriate, but next time you're at the restaurant or next time this happens, I want you to do the following. So you're sitting there at Old Grist Mill eating with your friends and you're like, man, I'm having a good time. And your rectum just sends a signal to the brain. The brain opens the internal anal valve whoop, involuntary. So then the feces through peristalsis starts to go down, gravity fed, right? All I want you to do is be like, hey, man, I, have... I need to go to the bathroom. And I want you to turn to your friend or whoever you're eating with and be like, hey, guess what? My internal anal valve just opened. Good thing I have my external anal valve keeping me clean. Okay, and then you can go to the bathroom. Now, if you do that, you will be my favorite student of all time. And then, once it leaves, we will call this defecation. Okay, defecation is uh, poopy. Okay, so make sure we get that one. Okay, congratulations on uh, rocking on the large intestine and Crohn's disease and stuff like that. Don't forget Hostra, stuff like that. So here's what I want you to do. Just do me a favor. Try to label. All of these guys. Now, eight is funky. Don't be mad about an answer number eight. I just got this online. I think everything's good except number eight. Number eight kind of sucks. Other than that, you're good. Okay, the answers are coming in three, two, one. Whoop. There you go, guys. Hey, thanks for watching Birds Basics. I'll see you on the flip side.